meditation. And we went ahead and said, uh, we, we brought two words, medication and meditation. The both uh, words have the same root meaning, the deeper meaning. It comes from Latin by Greek, which means to measure, meditation. The Sanskrit word ma itself means that the letter, ma means to measure. Therefore, you probably heard maya in Sanskrit. The word maya means uh, love in English. They say that uh, love is measured. For example, I love you because if you give me something. I love you if you do this for me. I love you if you, you know, do what I want, want you to do. And the Hindus, and um, as well as the Buddhists, they call it illusion. Because anything that, that is measured, it's outside, outward knowledge. So, uh, uh, and we, we also said, uh, and meditation, when we uh, uh, take it inside and act upon meditation, uh, that, that is sort of uh, not the right way of meditation. Uh, forgive me, I'm not saying uh, you have to agree what I said. It's, we, we can see it in ourselves if we go into it deeply. Um, so, and then we went, went ahead and uh, we said that meditation must be planted in the right soil. The right soil for meditation, we said, is inquiry. The word inquiry has no opinion whatsoever. Uh, so when there is inquiry, there is attention. You're attending because, you see, when we inquire something, we just want to find out. We, we don't have any opinion because if we begin with the opinion, we end up in opinion. Mm. Because opinion has no beginning, no end. It just goes on and on. Because, you see, all this fragmentation of all the religion, philosophy is nothing more than fragmentation, like opinions. I have my opinion, so I start, go ahead and start some uh, cult, some group. So, but when there is opinion, uh, when there is inquiry, there is no opinion. That's what Buddha says. That's the Buddha's in original teaching. So we have to begin meditation in the right soil. We have to plant. The plant must be right. We can't expect. We can't plant a bamboo tree and expect a, a, a pumpkin to grow out of it. We have to, you know, plant the right uh, kind of meditation, and from that, naturally. Not by force. There is attention. The word attention means attending. You're attending to it. If you're really interested in something, you just attend. You're totally into it. You don't have to make any effort. It's just that things that we don't like, and if we force it, there is, you know, um, effort. But there's no effort. Something we like, for example, if we like somebody likes painting, and you're painting, you lose yourself in it. There's no effort. But when we do something uh, that we don't like, we have to bring effort, right? I mean, you know, that's, that's and where there is attention, there must be uh, observation. You just observe. And in observation, observation naturally brings forth uh, awareness, choiceless awareness. There is no choice. You don't choose between uh, this or that. You just, you just look, you just observe. And when meditation grows out of that, the fruit of meditation is, you know, beautiful. So we, we said that, that's the right way of meditation, meditate, meditation, which is the one unitary process. It's not fragmentary process. But naturally, meditation in the East, uh, West, sorry, not the West, is planted in the wrong soil. I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not saying you have to accept what I said. It's, I'm just, we're just discussing. We are together sharing this. I'm not saying, you have to agree what I say, but we are working together. It's not that I say, and that is the truth. But we are work we can see it in ourselves. But meditation here begins with desire. They begin meditation with desire, which means I want. I am unhappy by practicing this certain thing. I will just get up, you know, go over there, be happy, be enlightened, be liberated, be, you know, achieve moksha, and then. The desire, where there is desire, that's, that there must be effort. Obviously. When I desire something, I must make effort. 
And where there, where there is effort, there must be will. Oh, I must, you know, that kind of will. And that will itself, inward, I'm not talking about outward world. In outward world, we need, if we want to achieve something, we must make great effort. If, 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 if we want to be a successful businessman, you have to do all kinds of things. But we are talking about inward matter, inward. So where there is will, there is effort. Where there is effort, there is will. Other way, you know, either way. And where there is effort and will, there must be direction. Direction means I am I am unhappy by practice the, the method, all the methods are the, just the direction leading to my happiness somewhere up there. And through that I try to create a space. You see, you see now how important it is. I say through this effort, through practicing this method, I will get there, which is my happiness, my joy, my whatever it, my enlightenment, my liberation, or whatever it may be. And inwardly, uh, when we measure meditation, we, we create trinity. There is meditator, there is meditation, I mean the practice, which is meditation. There is a, a practice, systems, and there is a goal somewhere out there. And I am the meditator, I must practice, I must do something. I must practice this to get there, and I'm in the middle, and I have to make all kinds of efforts to get there, that my goal. And we said that is uh, a wrong way of meditation. It's not I saying, but uh, that's what the ancients were concerned about. That's what Buddha, when he says, ehi pasyati, which means come and see, come and be. You, Buddha says, you cannot become meditation. And you cannot do meditation. You can only be in the state of meditation. That's what the Buddha said. That's, I'm not, it's not my saying. It's Buddha's and Krishna's all the ancient peoples. Anyways, so um, so that kind of meditation. We said when the meditation begins with desire, there must be identification. I must identify my systems or this system, or and I follow somebody, somebody's systems or method, and that systems and method becomes much more important than I am. Because I, I'm invested on that. And through that, I create the center inside of me. And everything, I look everything through that. That may be illusion, delusion, I, we don't know. i give you an example. You go to learn piano or anything, and, uh, but you don't know a, a, anything about ABC of piano. And then you go to the, somebody who knows piano and teaches you wrong notes. And you practice, 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 practice for a long time. And you go to the concert, and you are now perfect pianist. You go to the concert, then you start playing piano, and everybody boos you. Why, why are everybody booing you? I've learned piano, I'm a pianist. You may, be, you may have been taught the wrong keys all through the time. You may, you may have become you know, perfect playing piano, but you may be practicing wrong notes all through the time. So it's you know, so when we identify anything outwardly with method, with system, with techniques, what happens that creates the center within us, that creates center. I don't know whether I'm making it clear, but and what happens is I act from that center. That center becomes much more important. Mm. That fragments. Whereas the meditation is the process of emptying. Not gathering towards, but emptying. Because the mind must be empty, totally empty. Not have any residue of the past. Not, just so that when uh, we, we, we begin, to, we, when we want to uh, perceive something new, the mind has space. So I, we can see something new totally. And the mind is always alive, like always fresh and alive in the shasha. But when we fill up with knowledge, what happens? We have no space. So, the Buddha's question is, is it possible to have outward knowledge, so much knowledge, anything? To become, like, to become a doctor, you have to study for a long time. To be a painter, you have to study for a long, long time. If you want to, if you want to be a, become a good gardener, you have to know the seasonal plants, the right soil, and you have to you know, do all kinds of things. 
that that's knowledge but whether it is is it possible not to take that outward knowledge inwardly and identify with it that's when the problem begins because the method techniques everything is past and we try to fill our present moment through that past we bring that knowledge and everything we begin everything through our past conclusions everything we do is we just oh that person has said so and i must practice all this and, and what happens this moment i miss this moment because i brought the past into it so meditation must begin here and now it's not somewhere in the past or in the future or you know it's here so it's so important to understand this because if we understand this that we can be really good outside in knowledge like for example i can speak like 10 to a language if i go out there and say oh look i speak so many languages i've learned so many things what happens i, I have pride vanity and all that ugliness that comes out of it let's take for an example russia is a big uh, country right they have military power and everything that's a fact but when they identify that fact inwardly, or look at us, we have so much power, or America or anywhere, we have so much power so we can do anything we want, and they have identified their power, outward power, inwardly, and they have created center in them. Oh, we are Russians, we are so good, we can kill anybody. And you see the result, what happens. So, the ancient have said again, 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 that you open any scriptures, whether it's Buddhist, Hindu, or any, uh, scriptures from the East, they say that this identification of outward knowledge to inner must cease somehow. Inwardly, nobody knows anything. The moment I say I know, I have already missed. That's what Lao Tse says in first sentence in Tao Te Ching. The truth, the Tao that can be told of isn't the absolute Tao. The Tao means truth in Chinese. The moment I say it is truth, I have already brought the, you see, I, maybe one minute before, maybe 10,000 years, doesn't matter, it's, knowledge is the past. To know means past. So when I, when somebody says, I know, I know, which is already past, already knowledge, which is good, it's outward world, in technological world, scientific world, everything based on measurement, everything is knowledge. We can't live without that. Without technological knowledge, there is no progress possible. We have come so far outwardly. But inwardly, when we take the same attitude of knowledge and we start acting upon it, then there is trouble. There's a black people, white people. We gave an example last night. There's a black, white people. And that's part, that's a fact. It's the expression of you know, nature, expression of you know, genetic conditions, the weather where you're born, you become white, black. That's, that's fact. But the moment we take that inwardly and start to identify, oh, this person is black, less in Haiti, then there is a problem. We said that last time, last time we were here. So, uh, and we went ahead and uh, we touched uh, on the three schools of the East. There is a, a three school exists in the East. The, the school of the fakir, the school of the monks, and the school of the yogis. There's a three school exist. And uh, in the West, the yogi school is very famous. But the monks and the fakir schools are not very uh, famous. So they believe that in the East, they believe that in our body, we, we are not one, we are three. We have physical body, we have a mental body, mental uh, thoughts and all that, and we have emotional body. We are we are not one, we are three, they say. And the Paki works in the physical body. You may have seen if you have been to India and all those Nepal, all those places, you may have seen people sitting in the in, in the bed of nails. They don't get hurt. And you may have seen people standing in a one leg for God knows how long. <laughs> You've probably seen it. Some people, I have seen people, uh, a yogi, uh, not yogi, fakir, is standing 
This is the, uh, there's a confusion. Usually, Fakir is considered a yogi, but that's a different school. That's, that's the, so, he's standing on his head for 20 years. And his disciple would come, a disciple would come and spoon feed him in a room in Baranasi, I have seen when I was a little boy. That's a, that's a fucking school that their only purpose is to how to make body so strong that, that their will, you know, just obeys everything, you know, make it like really willful, the body. And there's another school of monk. The monk in the monastery, you may have heard chanting and reciting scriptures and all that. That is to work uh, for your emotion. Oh, money, Padme, oh, all these kind of thousands of different. They may be reciting the same thing, same word like for five, six years. One time I, I stayed in the monasteries, I had to recite this Om Mani Padme, this one thing, one mantra. For 10 hours. This is, I'm talking about yoga. This is a, a, a Buddhist sort of yoga. Because I will come to the word yoga late, a bit later. So uh, they, they want to work to the emotion. And there is one ancient, very esoteric um, system that they sort of measure that our, our body, our whole system, organism. It's like 60-70% of the body is all emotion. For example, like, not like emotion we usually understand is, uh, uh, you know, being sad and all that, but part, there's positive emotions, emotion. The word emotion means motion, movement. Anything that moves, yes, I like, I dislike, you know, I know, I don't know, all that is emotion. Movement, motion, motive, that has motive. The word motive means movement. So, and there is a yogi school. This is what people do in the, in the West. Now, this is very familiar. All this Hatha Yoga, Raja Yoga, all this uh, posture-based uh, movement, a yogi school. These three schools exist. So, usually in the East, one works on physical body for four or five years, depending how long it takes to, to make the body uh, uh, obey what you're taught and emotion you have to say. Just obey. Work and work and work five, ten years, God knows how long. <laughs> and they go to the monastery. I've done all these things. I'm not just saying because you know, I've, I've gone through all this. And they go to the monk's school in the monastery to work in, to the emotion. And then they go to the yoga school. In the yogi school to, to learn all kinds of you know postures, breathings, and there is one of the things that's not known in the east uh, west about movement is uh, there is so many monks uh, Buddhist uh, yoga which is preserved and they is hidden. It is let's say a secret. Let's say why not? They they don't know anything about Buddhist yoga, but Buddhism has yoga with uh, it. It has uh, come a little bit to the West as a yantra yoga and all that, but that's, you know, that's a hidden yoga there. There's a movement, I'll show you one movement later. So, and we, we uh, so, what is yoga? Now, now these three things, the body, mind, and emotion, that's what we